Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. I'm Dr. Willie Jolly, and this is my beautiful bride. This is Dee. You're cool now. You can do it. You're a cute little thing, too. Thank you, dear. She cute. I love her. I love her. I love her. I love her. Almost 40 years. Still got the hots for her. Anyway, hello, everybody, wherever you may be around the country, around the world. Um, we're the authors of the book, Make Love, Make Money, Make It. Let me not block the Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last, 10 Secrets to Shape a Great Marriage. We've been married, as I said, almost 40 years. In June 28th, 40 years. We'll have to have a party. Anyway, um, greetings, and we are here to to talk to you about uh, marriage and how to improve your marriage. And tonight we're gonna to talk about a subject that came across our desk, came into our viewpoint that needs to be addressed. Someone needs help on this, which is... What was that cute little topic? How to handle when your partner puts you down in public. Or you get a public put down. A public put down. A public put down by your partner. What does that mean? Well, that means your partner uh, says something or does something that is disrespectful, dismissive, embarrassing. That you perceive to be. That that's, the recipient. That's correct. That the recipient to be. perceives to be. Disrespectful. Well, it's embarrassing. It's, it's disrespectful. Unkind. Unkind. It's um, rude. And, and they and they don't do it once. This is not something that happened once. It's, it, it's happened more than once. And the person says they're, they're concerned about it and they're tired of it. So what do you do? Well, that's what we want to talk about. So... Uh, let's see, Malika's here. Ooh, this is going to be good. Yeah, you know, this is going to be. <laughs> she said, This is going to be good. And you're right about that. This is going to be good. Uh, this is, uh, okay, we're on the right IG. Uh, by the way, for those who are uh, on Facebook Live, Instagram Live, or LinkedIn Live, we also have it on IG on a, a separate uh, device. So we're. Trying to reach as many people as we can at the same time. And one more thing for those who uh, we got to always reach out and say hello to the people who are watching on the, the recorded version of the show. We, got, we found that a lot of people watch it after the fact or after or Monday. Whenever. Whenever. After Monday night. Uh, we do it live on Monday night. But a lot of people watch it uh, on, on the replay at the Jolly Marriage YouTube. Okay. So imagine this, a, how, how do you want to go through this? Why don't you just give the back, the, the, you give the back story because you might be able to give it better than me. We both cringed. 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 When this happened. In our presence. So how do we be? As we were talking. Of, we were talking to someone. It's the end of a, a we, function. A function, right? And someone wanted to talk to me. The person's significant other had gone out to get the umbrella. Or, yes. And came back to say. I got the umbrella. Are you ready to go? At which time the person said, person said uh, can't you see I'm talking? Ooh, Lord. I don't, and, and I don't know where that came from. Uh, oh, that didn't, didn't say, it, it really was, uh, excuse me, I'm talking here. And it was very dismissive. It was the end of a wonderful yeah, afternoon. Go. I know. I, I know. Go. I know. We can. It was the end of a wonderful afternoon. Everybody was upbeat. Upbeat. 
happy. Yes. And we were beginning to say our goodbyes. Yes. And I cringed on the inside. And I didn't know that Willie had cringed on the inside. And then when we got we will got to the car and we were kind of debriefing. I was so sad. Right. So how do you handle that though? How did it make you feel when you heard it? It made me go, ouch. Ooh. I felt I felt I felt bad for the person. I, I had an who ouch. was on the receiving end of yeah, that. Yeah, I had an ouch. I, I didn't know where that came from. And I thought, why would you you speak that way to someone? When you had been so pleasant to them all this time. Yeah. So this is probably not the first time that has happened. And so that said, how do we address that to that person who who wants, what do I do here? How do I handle this? The person who had been dismissed. I mean, that was the right word. It had been, you, you ain't important. But you also have... I think you have to think that the person who made the comments, this is probably a part of their basic communication style. Yeah, but that's not, that's, that's immaterial. If it's the way they communicate, it still is a problem. And if there's a problem, they have to change their communication. So let's go there first. And you said to me in the car that you have learned to code switch. Talk about that. That's for, that's okay. what we gotta talk. Okay, okay. So so you introduced a term code switching. Correct. You mentioned that. You said I learned to code switch because sometimes okay. I'm a hard driver okay. when I'm negotiating. Okay, so or... let's go back. Okay. For those who might not know, it is something we talked about before. But this is an actual sad case where, where it's applicable. When I say code switch, you speak one way when, let's say, you're the boss. And here's what I need done, one, two, three, four. You don't need to be sweet, charming, you know. You have work. Let's say you have work. You, you have work. You're, you're, the, the, you're the boss. Line. You're running the things. Line. Run here, do this. Come on, let's move. Right. Up. Bam. Or oh. even, and I came up with the term code switching as a result of, my having to deal with this business. I had to learn this business when I came in with you almost 30 years ago versus what I was used to doing when I was on Capitol Hill or even when I taught school. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain language and intonation of one's voice that you use when you're conducting business. And then there's another way when you're communicating with someone socially mm -hmm. and someone that you have a personal and intimate relationship with that's still different right so that's code switching so the sound of your, your voice the 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 intonation is different there should be a sweetness and a thoughtfulness and a kindness that is used when you're communicating with someone that you care about and you don't have that edge. I work at it because I know I have, I know I have an edge because I'm usually annoyed about something <laughs> related to the business. There's something to the business. And I, I, can hear, I can hear the phone I, crash. Somebody no, called and no, been no, a spam, a spam no, caller. No, no, not necessarily, not, not the scam. spam, not, not the spam call, no. I'm annoyed when I have to deal with certain clientele who may not pay on time. Everybody wants services, but not everybody wants to pay promptly. And the issue that I have with Willie, and this, this is a little off track, he wants to work with everybody about everything. I'm bottom line, okay, how are they paying? I want to help Lottie Dottie and everybody. Yes. I want to help and all like, the little children. I want to help everybody. And I'm focused on, okay, how are we paying here? You know, I want you to be paid before your services are rendered because it then becomes, I have to chase sometimes to get the resources. So I'm a little annoyed a lot of the times. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. So how I have to deal with people collecting money 
is very different than how I deal with you on the back end. Correct. But and, and that's when you talk to me. Now, when you talk to me, you Che has a different tone always. I'm caring because I care about you. Now, I love what you. would have happened if you were talking to someone else, somebody, mm -hmm. and I had come up to you and say, hey, are you ready to go? Mm -hmm. What would you have done? Okay. Well, you've said, okay. Or I, I would have said. Give me a second. We're, we're, all, 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 we're all always, we're all, most of the time we are together. But let's say you're deep in a conversation. You mm -hmm. might say, give me a second. Mm -hmm. I would say, okay, okay. I mean, my, I am so used to switching mentally in terms of when I turn to deal with you. Right. Okay, hon. That's probably what I would have said. Eh, that's not a problem. Okay. But you, let's say you wanted to, you want me to hold on for a moment. What would you have said? Okay, yeah. okay honey, give me a minute. That's right. That's what you would have said. Mm -hmm. hey, okay, honey, give me a minute. And then you, even if you were in an intense, in an intense conversation. And I have been. And you have been. And I've come up okay. and you say, okay, okay, baby. Mm -hmm. I'll be right with you. Mm -hmm. That is code switching. And it's a, it's a consciousness. And, and we weren't in an intense conversation, by the way. We no, were not no. in it. We were just in a we casual we were being conversation. Social caring, yeah, and casual. that person was having a conversation with, with, with you. Right. With me. With, with you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it's you can learn it. That's what we want. Well, that's here. That's what p p p thought. point. That's what we're doing this show tonight. To say to couples, you can learn to be kind to your spouse, even when you're when you're in a different mindset or a different place, when you speak to them, you should switch. It's like people who who can speak multiple languages and they can go from English to Spanish and English to Spanish without even thinking of after they've they've developed that they skill. They train. They train their brain. They train their brain, and they train. And what we're saying to Couples, and we. This is not the first time we've we've dealt with people who who sent us letters. We just happen to be so in front of it. But we've had letters. People say my partner puts me down. I e the lady who talked about her husband at the women's seminar that you were teaching, who was pregnant, and she's called her husband an idiot in public. Now he wasn't in the room, and you said you can't do that. That doesn't work. So all of these are really learned behaviors. And if you can learn to be unkind, you can learn to be words, kind. You can learn to be kind. Yep. But you have to become aware of how words affect you, how words affect everything and the tone of the words. <coughs> I just when I say with this particular situation. I thought respect, not not just kindness, but how you say things should to somebody that you care about, that you travel with, that you do, you you would be kind, which says maybe they don't know that the words are abusive. No, it wasn't that, abusive. That, it was dismissive. There's a difference between abusive and uh, it, this this conversation was not. You was not abusive. It was dismissive and was disrespectful. Now, okay. It was disrespectful. Okay. Uh, okay. Brenda uh, okay. says uh, uh, it's it's communication. That's bad communication. Yes, bad. Now, how do we fix that though? Okay. Because a lot of couples. This is not this is not a rare situation. Okay. Give the, go. Just, how do you fix it? How do you handle it? How do you do it? You got some points. Okay. Let's let me first say. For this person to do this in public would suggest this is not the first time this has happened. Okay, that's we that's okay. That, that would, let's get back. Okay, to okay. That. So, what do you do? I, you tell what you're gonna do, and I already have something in my mind. What, I'm, <laughs> what I would say. You okay, I would say you need to pick a the right time to to get into the conversation. I would not, and we talked about this with somebody else earlier who said. I would take them aside during this particular situation and tell them something. I would, <laughs> she was being kind. I, I, I would not she do would that. Pitch, she said she'd pitch a fit. Okay. Uh, well, 
She and said but, she'd take them to the side. And, and then pitch a fit. I would, I, I would never do anything in public because that is beneath me to make a scene. Right. So I would choose the right time after to have a conversation when we're both calm, together, not heated, maybe an evening. After dinner, if it's just the two of us, and say, you know, honey, I need, I need to talk to you something about that. That's a little uncomfortable for me. So difficult conversation. Me, yeah. Difficult conversation. Well, every every relationship will have at some point in time a difficult conversation so, so, about something. Maybe yes. money, or maybe about children, maybe right. about something else. So, so you have yeah. to find a calm, neutral, not not when y'all been fighting or disagreeing about taking out the trash or anything like that, some comfortable time. And then you want to use our words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right? Yep, yeah. When you said, or I felt like this, when we were in this situation and you used those words, I felt hurt. Mm. I felt dismissed. I felt embarrassed mm. when you said ABC. Mm -hmm. Okay. They might think they might not have known it. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to know that I feel bad about that. Yeah. Now, maybe this is a result of whatever you had that was going on and you were in a hurry and and you didn't have really time to think about how you were going to respond to me because mm -hmm. sometimes the first thing that comes up should not come out and sometimes we need to have i'm just saying this is an aside a delayed response and and say nothing as opposed to the first thing that's coming up at your mind that mm -hmm. should that should not come out right it should right? not come out there right Right. Don't make a scene, in other words. And, and, and right. uh, Brenda said, no scene. That's right. Don't make a right. scene there. Right. Right. Then, can you talk about, well, how, how do you think we, what's a better way for us to communicate when you might be stressed and upset mm -hmm. and, and you want to, we need to have a conversation. What are some parameters that we could come up with? Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Right. And, and agree to, well, let's talk about that. Let's throw some ideas out on the table because when we talk about in in, in our that never ever argue again, right? Oh, that, oh let's take a not, moment here. Go to the TED Talk, uh, How to Never Ever Argue Again in Marriage. It's at jollymarriage.com. But that's when we talk about that. I'll bring that up again, though. But we're not, that's a part of it. But we're not, at this point, we're not arguing. We're saying, because of this particular situation that hurt my feelings, right? right? Mm -hmm. But but some of the ideas and practices that we use there in terms of we're having a challenge communicating. So let's throw this communication thing on the other side of the table, right? right? And let the two of us figure out how we can communicate in a more gentle, kinder, loving manner. How about that? Okay. Huh? All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then agree that we're going to be patient with each other. And, and, and being patient with each other, in my mind, means that when you act crazy, I'm not going to come out of my mouth to it. <laughs> He's your crazy. That crazy does not have to become your crazy. Let me say that again. That crazy does not have to become your crazy. You got a choice. So you don't have to go crazy because somebody else is crazy or acting crazy. Okay. And, and we have to be patient with each other because changing how we interact with each other, knowing the triggers that we have takes time to change behavior, right? Yes. So 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 we can say, you know what? When when you say this, I feel hurt. Oh no, I mm -hmm. I didn't mean to do that. Mm -hmm. But it will take over time. What was I reading about some of my goaling stuff? It takes like 66 days to actually change your behavior. You got every, you know, it's everywhere. It depends upon how difficult the task or the behavior is that you want to change. Mm. But something that can be as, as difficult as how you communicate with somebody based upon a, a more immediate response can take time. 
Right. So we agree that we will be patient with each other. And when you or I fall off the off the track, we will be patient. And maybe we will have a code which says, honey, you remember when we talked about this? And so? <laughs> yeah. And bring us back on track. Yeah. Right. OK. So we can have a code word. Which, which is what we do when we go out and you drag me everywhere in the world. And then I'm like, I, 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 what I say? I have no more words. And, and well, we, I have no more words. And when we're out and we have glad handed and I have been to two or three different things with him walking. I learned to wear flat shoes, not heels. And we've been everywhere. And then it's like, honey, I have no more words. I have no more words. The introvert, the introvert in her has has used up her allotment of words to people in small talk. She has no more small talk. So she says, it's time for us to go. I, I, she doesn't say that. that. She just said, I have no more words. I have, honey, I have no more words. No more words. So, so then that gives him an opportunity. The side to close up. The to side to... shutting this down, getting ready to go. Right. Because Bring I know she, because she got no more words. I got enough words for everybody all night long. I got words for people. I got word. I got talk. I can go all night long, but no more words. Okay, now let me tell you what I say. How to handle this? How to handle when your partner, a public put down by your partner? One, no scene, not there. And go to the TED Talk and use what we say in the TED Talk, the four Fs. Be friendly. Find a time when you're friendly. Maybe it's in the car. Maybe it's on the way home. But you don't come off mad. You got to make sure you're at a point where you're not mad and angry and and and. What well, it might not be mad. It may, may be hurt. Now, well, whatever. That, okay. Friendly. Okay. Be friendly. You might be hurt, but you still be friendly. Be frank about your feelings. What D said was right. Not about you, you, you. It's about here's how that made me feel. And sometimes, as you said yeah. before, this can't be hard for a man to do. Yeah. And, and say, you know, my feelings were hurt. And men have to really work on it because sometimes men have been trained, never cried, never had hurt feelings. No, my feelings were hurt. So be, be able to be vulnerable for a moment. So, you know, That's such an important word. Vulnerable. Oh, right, right. So be friendly. Be frank of how it made you feel. Be fair. Why Why did you say that? Why? And you might not know. Maybe, you might not why know. do you do that? Why do you do that? Why did you do that? Why did you say that? Why did you dismiss me like I was a child? Okay. Okay. That was what the feeling was. So be friendly, be frank, be fair about how it made you feel. Then be focused on a win-win. If they, if he, the person, has mm -hmm. said this to the partner, mm -hmm. then that would help to fix it, to handle it. How do you handle it? So that's the question. How do you handle the put down in public by your partner? The public put down by your partner. That's that's the topic. How do you handle the public put down by your partner? And the answer is you don't make a scene there. That so, is not the so answer. So the short answer is you do nothing while you're right there in public. Nothing right there. Because I think anything you would do would make it worse. Well, it, it would not be thoughtful. It would be emotional. And you don't want to be emotional and fly off the handle. You want to be thoughtful. I'm thinking about this. What am I going to say? How am I going to say it? So that we can get... Not ex, uh, to to ramp it up, but to calm it down. Let's do that. Okay, so in the car or late at night, night at home, I recommend you do it that same day, though. Get it that done day. Mm -hmm. Don't go to bed with this on your mind. You won't sleep well. And then say, "Let's. we need to talk about this. Be friendly. Be frank about your feelings. Be fair. Why did you do it? And then be focused on a win-win. <laughs> You know, we want this. We want to win. As a, we want this to win. So how, how? What can we do so that this doesn't happen again? Or how do we? What do we need to do to change how we're interacting in similar situations? How about that? Yes. And what I recommend everybody do is get the book, the marriage book, and read it. I mean, read it. This book is a a tool that has been crafted 
for you to help your relationship on many levels, on finance, on communication, on, on drama in a relationship. The drama in here is important. It says, make your significant other, well, I'll tell you right here, make your significant other feel significant. And you know, and I would go to immediately for many if they knew how they would do it. So it's ongoing education. When you say make your significant other feel significant, they may think that that's what they're already look, doing. Look, look, Brenda just said, I had someone think what they said was nothing wrong with it after I told them how it made me feel. And so that is, and see, a person cannot question your feelings. Now, they can say, you know, they can say, well, I, I didn't see, but it, it, it not, what, not a matter whether they think it's right or wrong. It's how that made me feel. It's how it made me feel. So no one can question how, how you, you feel. feel. That's right. That's your feeling. As to, as a result of what they said. And they say, well, I don't see why. I, I, I understand you might not, but that's how I felt. You know, to me, that sounds, Brenda, insensitive. Well, sometimes people have to feel that they're never wrong. And so we're not going to get into it's about you. It's about this. Whatever happened, this is how that made me feel. Mm. It may, and here's a word that you can use. It made me feel devalued. I knew, mm. I knew you. That's the word. That. That's the word. That's the word. That's the word. The word. That. That's the word. Mm -hmm. It's devalued. Mm -hmm. Nobody should feel devalued. Nobody wants to feel devalued. It makes me feel devalued. What you gonna say? Then? And if they care, no, it doesn't. If uh, they yes. care about you, yes, they will accept that and apologize. Yes. Yeah. And say, let's fix that. And then yes. we talk about code switching. Here's what I would encourage that yes. person to do: when they are in a, 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 an intense conversation or stressful, of a, remember that their significant other is their significant other. So code switch. I'm a, Oh, what, 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 what you need and to... code switching is something that you also learn. Because right. some of us don't have kind words in our vocabulary. That's true. Do you know that? And you can learn it though. You can. But first we have to become aware that we spend a lot of our time being <laughs> to everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Especially during this season, you know, where everybody's like intense right. with elections. People are unkind. Mm -hmm. And I think once the atmosphere becomes intense, they just start to spew mean spirited things. And then they're not really conscious, conscious of it, but it just kind of comes out. So we have to watch our words. And sometimes we need to read. The other thing is, what are some tools that can help us be kinder, thoughtful? We have to read. Right. And not the social media snippets. I mean, actually read. Right, right. <laughs> okay, uh, our time is up for this. I hope this was helpful to you, person B, in the person A, B situation. Hope this was helpful and that you will have the conversation, be friendly, be frank, be fair, be focused. And then if you share this video with person A, who was the dismissive person say, just learn to code switch. And um, we can work at this together. It's not something that happens overnight, but first you have to have the desire to be thoughtful, to be caring, to be kind. And that is something we all can learn. Everybody can yes. learn. Brenda, thank you for yes. your submission. All of you, she hadn't been able to be here live. She's probably watching the replays, Aww. but she's glad to be back live. Thank you. And it's a great show. Well, good to have you back. All the other people who are watching, whether you're watching live, uh, we got so many people who say, I watch you. We got to give a shout out to Sharon Pitts. Sharon Pitts, Neil and Sharon Aww, Pitts, who we were with, couple. she said, I listen every week to your show. I sometimes make me and Neil watch it. And so thank you, Sharon, for your support. 
Gladys Pemberton, I know you're watching. So many people. Uh, we celebrated the Roosevelt Senior High School had their 50th anniversary. Uh, it was a class of 74. Weekend. It was incredible. I want to shout out Dorita Norman Smith, who was the president. She, look, here's what I told her. She signed up to be the president of our senior class in 1974. She did not sign up for a <laughs> lifelong presidency, but she stepped up. And she stepped up to the office and 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 led this team of high energy, high personality, big personality folks with lots of ideas, with such calm and demeanor and, and graciousness. And it was just a wonderful. Want to shout out all the planning committee. We had the Larry uh, Allen, Larry Allen, uh, Greg Booker, Dr. Rowe, uh, Angie Jefferson, um, Neil Pitts. Uh, everybody who was on it, I might have forgot somebody. Uh, 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 Miss Upshaw uh, Holder, uh, Deborah Upshaw Holder was wonderful, as well as oh, the Parkers, uh, the Parker, James and Lane Parker, and uh, Paul Brown and Sheila Douglas. Oh, we just had a great uh, committee. Oh, Janelle Sims, Janelle Sims was fantastic. Mm -hmm. So anyway, want to shout all of them out. We had such a great time. Thursday night a me fellowship. mixer, Friday night a gala. Saturday, a picnic and Sunday worship together, followed by a first class luncheon for the for the uh, offered by Shiloh, by Shiloh Baptist, Baptist, Church Baptist Church in Washington Ninth and P. Street, Ninth, Ninth and P. P. Northwest, Northwest Washington D.C. Yeah. was fabulous. Great message, great music, great and fellowship. then great fellowship. Yeah. What a great time! So, uh, thank you, Sharon Pitts, for for staying connected to us and watching, and all the others who watched and came up to us and tell us that they watched the show. Our time is up. We going out. Oh, you took my little mouse. Okay, that's all right. Oh, yeah. That's all right, sweetie. Yeah. I love you. You can, you can take my little mouse. You can take whatever you like, but I love you. See y'all next week. And remember, your best is yet to come. Oh, go to jollymarriage.com. Get the book. Get the uh, two copies, the workbook. Uh, get the bundle. That's it, the bundle. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it right now. Go right now and get the bundle at jollymarriage.com. We'll sign it. Okay, boom, we'll sign it for you. And then also watch the TED Talk at jollymarriage.com and then share that with everybody you know. We don't want people arguing. We haven't had an argument in 38 years and people don't believe it when we say it, but it's true. It's because so, you always fight. Well, usually, but uh, I... <laughs> See, you thought you were, I'm going to use that. Yeah. Anyway, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye. -bye. <laughs>why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near just like me they long to be close to you